Hi friends, in this video I'm trying to explain spanning tree in the easiest possible manner. So as you know, spanning tree is a protocol which is actually used for preventing loops uh, in a bridge environment. The issue with this, span, this uh, Ethernet loops is that as there is no field or no provision in the Ethernet for TTL time to live, the loop, as even a smaller loop can actually become into a huge broadcast domain uh, storm and it can create a lot of problems, right? So spanning tree is a mechanism, it's one of the mechanism that actually can prevent loop, it's one, one of the oldest protocol, all the new protocols are actually based on the same and uh, the original algorithm was STA. So I just want to explain how does that work and uh, how does actually it calculates uh, you know the spanning tree actually. So in spanning tree what really happens is you have to elect something called a root bridge. A root bridge is going to be the central point of the network, right? Now, before I go for the root bridge, I want to actually explain uh, that using a point here. Sorry for that. The importance of spanning tree. I want to explain the importance of spanning tree. Let's say you have a huge switching environment, and I'm not really making it huge. It just saying huge so you have to really assume that and I have these 16 switches in my environment probably each having connecting to each other right just to tell you the importance of the spanning tree it, I'm just drawing it now what's gonna happen is let's say the cost that you have most of these interfaces are equal cost they are like gigabit interface the cost you have so how much time do you are you going to take to decide what is the best path that I have from here to reach to if that's your exit of your network you have internet connectivity here right from this bridge how fast can you really calculate manually to go there now that is what a spanning tree algorithm is all about it calculates pretty fast the best path to reach to my destination in this environment it's going to elect one of the bridge actually as the root bridge and everybody will have a loop free path to each other using that loop bridge right so two things are actually achieved at simultaneously one thing is to have a loop free path so no loop so loop free path that's the first thing the second thing is the calculation of the best path these are two different things right so the best path in the shortest possible time shortest path first right so it actually uses almost the same thing if you look at what was the algorithm the algorithm was sta and further if we go the, you look at protocols like OSPF and ISIS, they use something called shortest pass first or, first or Dijkstra algorithm. All these are actually variants of or they all depend on STA algorithm itself. So that is that tells how important it is. In fact, in the modern protocols, almost everything is based on spanning tree. So when you talk about fabric path or trill, they almost have similar mechanism except that they actually all work on layer 3 or they have some kind of mechanism to avoid layer 2 etc. Now coming back to this scenario we have to elect a root bridge here so that's the first property or first rule of spanning tree that you find a central point to which you can have a loop free path. So that's called root. Now how does a root elect it? So when let's say everybody booted uh, for the first time these are all brand new switches these are the MAC address that you have for these switches and these are the priority so basically in root election there are two important things parameters that is going to take part which is a priority value and a MAC address combine that it's called bridge ID so when all these switches you know boot up for the first time what's going to happen is everybody will project himself as root and will send BPDUs now that's a term that you have for bridge protocol data units a BPDU basically is kind of a hello right it has all the two kind of BPDUs that you have there a configuration BPDU which has your identity which has a bridge ID and some other parameters 
and a topology change notification. We are going to discuss that in detail, but for the time being, let's assume that there is a hello kind of protocol that uh, thing is sent every two seconds. And for the first time I'm booting, everybody is sending his hello to everybody, right? Once everybody sends hello to everybody, they will, and this hello doesn't go to everybody. It, in fact, they all send it to a multicast address. So remember that the BPDUs are not sent to unicast. They are actually sent to a multicast address, right? So it is the destination that you have is actually a multicast address. Now, once everybody sends a hello uh, to the multicast address that practically in the hello, they have the bridge ID. Now the bridge IDs are going to be compared. By default, it's a combination of a priority and a MAC address. Priority by default is 32768 for all the switches. So if you look at this environment, I have four switches here in this environment. I have switch A, switch B, switch C and D. All of them have similar priority. The first item that is going to be compared in the, in the bridge ID is going to be the priority, which is a two byte value. That further, when we go deep into it, we'll realize there is actually the four bits are reserved for uh, the priority value and six, uh, 12 bits are actually reserved for something called an extended VLAN ID or extended system ID, right? So not going to that right now, I'll just go into the priority. So first the priorities are compared and we realize the priorities are actually same. If the priorities are same, the tiebreaker, the next item that you have is MAC address. These are burned in addresses of Cisco switches or any other vendor that you have and mostly they will not be same, right? So the next tiebreaker is a big tiebreaker. The, if the, the priorities are same, it's going to be the next item is going to be MAC address. So either the lowest priority is going to win or the lowest MAC address. It will be either the lowest priority. If the priorities are same, that nobody is lower than each other then it's going to be the MAC address. The second item that you have is MAC address. If MAC address, let's say we will compare here. So switch A has this MAC address, which B has this MAC address, C and D here, which MAC address is the lowest is the A, which is the lowest. So finally, the first thing is done and we have found our root here. So root bridge is elected. A is elected as the root bridge. The next thing that's going to happen is now everybody knows he is the root. Now we have to calculate the best path to reach to root. Now this does not happen from the switches perspective. In fact, it happens from root perspective to everybody. The root finds out the best path to reach to everybody. And that is very interesting thing, right? So the calculation actually happens from the root perspective. Now for that matter, root will keep on sending every two seconds BPDUs. So once everybody has sent, you know, the initially when they were booting up, because everybody was thinking he's root, they are allowed to send a BPDU to the to the multicast address. Now further, once an, a root is elected, they are not supposed to send any BPDU to each other. They, they, they do not have authority to send BPDU. The only person who has the authority to send BPDU now further is the root bridge. So root bridge is going to send a BPDU and further based on the BPDUs, there will be other parameters which are going to be compared. But for the root bridge election, this is good enough. You don't require anything else. In the next video, I'm going to cover the best path from all the switches to the root bridge. Right? That's going to take different parameters. So we'll discuss that in the next video.